robust and delicious, this dish is definitely worth any time and money you spend on it. Today, I'm gonna to be making oxtail stew. Oxtail stew is delicious. It, well, if you wanna say historic dish, people have been stewing for millennia and they've been preparing cattle for millennia. So I can only suspect that this dish in one form or another in almost every culture that uh, uses cattle for food, I imagine that this has been made over and over and over again over the millennia. Wikipedia wants to say, hey, 17th century England immigrants. I can see that happening there, yeah, but I could also see it happening before that in other cultures as well. So I'm not going to credit this to anybody but just to say, it's a very old way of cooking and a very old dish. And it was often made by the poor parts of society because the cut is frequently seen as a throwaway cut. Folks, oxtails are really, really good when they're prepared right. And today, I'm gonna to show you the right way to prepare them. It's a technique that we call braising. And I wanna show you how to stack flavors, a few little tricks. It's a delicious dish. It requires a lot of patience. So let's get in the kitchen and make this up. But before we do, I would like to mention one thing. Um, you see I'm wearing Texas Cooking Today cap. I'm seeing, wearing one of my shirts. And something else I wanna mention on my website, satrotter.com. I'm now putting up my recipes. Now a lot of people have asked, do you have a print version of your recipes? And I've been working on it for a period of time now, but I'm just now starting to get them online because I'm getting them structured the way I want. One of the things that I always hated about doing, um, about doing recipes and recipe books and things like that was that there was no way to make notes in it. And I've always wanted that. And so I've designed that into my recipes. There's always extra lines for notes. You get a picture of what it's supposed to come out like. And it's well laid out, folks. You're going to really like this when you try the way I do mine. Also, it allows you to get each one separate so you don't have to purchase a recipe book for se per se. Then get a whole bunch of stuff you don't want. So take a look at that. That's S.A. Trotter Arts. Let's get in the kitchen cook something up come on beautiful set of ingredients here folks what do I have here these are the segments of a cow's tail what we call oxtails they're delicious when they're cooked right but you need to know one thing kind of like the brisket and other cuts of a cow that take long cooking these are the same way you got to slow cook them we're gonna be using also some wine I'm using right here white Zin uh, you can use white Zinfandel, you can use a red wine if you wish, any kind you want. You can use any wine you'd like. The wine is used for its fruitiness and for the acid in it. And so kind of tailor this dish to your taste by buying what you like. I have Worcestershire sauce, black pepper, bay leaf, and garlic and salt to flavor, as well as some tomato paste that brings a lot of flavor and acid to this dish and really works well with it. Toward the end of cooking, we work in our carrots and mushrooms. And on these, I'm using about one pound and a half a pound, all right? It's an easy recipe, but it takes patience. So let me show you how we do these fantastic oxtails. There's a lot to know about these. Okay, I've moved everything over and out of my way. Right now, none of this is gonna be needed. You should go ahead and open the wine because in a little while we're going to be using it to deglaze the pan and to start our cook with. Now here I have some cooking oil. I've got my oxtails ready and right now this pan is coming up in temperature. As soon as I get it nice and hot and it is ready to sear, then I'm going to put oil in there and I'm going to put my meat in there. We're going to start browning it off. I'm looking to sear this not all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just looking to get some browning on it and to release some of the juices from the meat to brown in the bottom of the pan. 
We call this stacking flavors, all right? And what I'm doing here is I'm developing a caramelized meat flavor that helps to flavor the entire stew. And it is delicious, ladies and gentlemen. It's something you really need to do the right way. So I've got right now a medium high heat underneath my pan. Let me make sure I'm correct there. There we go. And when this bottom surface is good and hot, I'm going to start searing. Is it hot enough to sear? Yeah, you see how the water is beating up? It's not steaming off and it's just rolling around. That is the sign. Now, here's a trick. Do not put oil down in this, okay? <laughs> not until you get that water out of there. Put your oil in. If there's any water in there, you'll know it really quick because it'll spatter up, okay? So, that's how we sear. That's how we know if it's hot enough. So there you go. Very simple thing to sear off meat. It builds flavor. It makes a dish fantastic. Go through this a little trouble. It doesn't take that long. Just kind of try to brown it on most of the sides and then move on to the other pieces as quickly as possible. And as soon as we get a good browning on the meat and in the pan, we're ready to move on. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are searing, you don't use a lid. Don't use a lid to stop the spatter around it, okay? If you do, you're going to be steaming and not searing, okay? Very important. If you need, use a fry screen to block some of that spatter. These have been seared. And like I said, not every single side was hit. They don't have to be perfect. We're just looking for plenty of seared area. Because like on the meat, all of it's going to get washed out in the cooking, okay? And this on the bottom of the pan is about to get washed right now. I'm going to start with the wine to deglaze the pan and then I'm going to work in the tomato paste to make it easier to get the two combined, okay? It's that simple. There we go. Beautiful. Now that's going to gently and slowly break loose all of that build up on the bottom of the pan. That's what we call a fond, okay? The fond is the built up meat juices that have caramelized and that develops flavor and that flavor becomes delicious in the final product. All right, so I've got, I've got some tomato paste here and we're gonna go right down in here. I'm just gonna start by working it in. And I find just uh, getting it to start taking a little bit of liquid helps at first. If you just work it a little bit, it doesn't take much. Use that whisk. Any of those little bits of broken loose meat or the fond will dissolve in the final product. So don't be in a big rush on that, okay? I guess if you were curious as to how much wine you might need, you just got your first um, take on that. All right, so we have the base ready. I'm gonna put my meat back in here and we're gonna add some more liquid. You've got your choice. You can add anything you want. Vegetable broth, uh, beef broth, water. It can be anything, folks. Now, I don't wanna pour the meat down in this because I don't want that hot liquid coming up and splattering on me. So just take your time, there's no rush here. All right, now I still have a high heat under this pan. I'm pouring in some beef broth. And folks, set your oven to 275 degrees or even as high as 300 if you wish. Remember, lower temperatures, slower cooking, almost always equals much better dish 
on this particular cook, okay? All right, now I'm just getting things mixed together. Get the rest of these in here. Okay, there we go. Now, when we're cooking like this, when we're braising and you're doing meats, you want just a little bit of that meat to stick up out of the juices. And that's what we have here. And here's why. There's gonna be a lot of juice that cooks out of this, these segments of tail. And that is going to add to the rest of this. These will then shrink a little bit. They're also gonna pull back from the bone. This takes a long time in the cooking, folks, so there's no rush here. Right now, this is over a medium-high heat still, the same way as when I was searing. As soon as it comes up and starts bubbling, I'll put a lid on it, and we're gonna get it in the oven. But before that, right now, we're gonna add in a few other flavors here. Now, folks, let's start with that Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna want, oh, about a quarter of a cup of Worcestershire in there. Yes, sir, if it's a little over, Guess what, it didn't hurt a thing. Black pepper, oh yeah. I'm gonna cook in a little bit, about a teaspoon worth, and then we're gonna add more at the end of cooking to really bring out the flavor of that black pepper well. For this, we're gonna use one bay leaf. Let me get out a good one here. That'll work, it's good enough. We're going to want about a teaspoon or slightly more just to begin with, maybe a teaspoon and a half. Now that garlic, all I have to do with my garlic, folks, is crush it and then put it right up there in my pan. Now, a little bit of a stir. Once this comes up in temperature, I'm gonna put it down in that oven and we're just gonna give it lots of time. Every once in a while, you can pull it out every couple of hours and you know, kind of stir it a little bit, check it, look at it, and see how it's coming along. Alrighty, this has started bubbling now and so it's time to get it down in the oven. Oh, this is so delicious. Okay, give it plenty of time. My meat is quite tender. It's pulling free from the bone, as you can see here. So I'm gonna gently transfer my oxtails right over to another pan. Now the reason I'm doing this I need to get these out of the way so that I can thicken this liquid and get my vegetables in there. And then I'm gonna put the meat back in. After another 15 minutes of cooking, the oxtail stew is ready to serve and enjoy. Got the bay leaf. Now, once you find that bay leaf, just go ahead and remove it. You don't want bay being down in that pot, not a full leaf of it. The flavor is all we needed from that. And that part is finished. All right, I have all of the meat out. Let's take a look in here and get this thickened up. I have my flame underneath this. I have some cold water here. It's about a cup and a half or maybe a little more. And I'm gonna use cornstarch. Now, there's two basic methods that I'll use to thicken a liquid like this. One is either flour and cold water mixed together or the other is cornstarch and cold water mixed together. And either way, it's gonna be about the same proportion, somewhere around maybe a half a cup or more of the uh, cornstarch or flour as your thickener. Now at first, the cornstarch is gonna bunch up on the bottom and it's gonna act like it won't dissolve, but give it a moment, just keep working with it. And yes, it will, it will dissolve. Now, believe it or not, I felt that break loose and it is now getting all mixed together. Now, let's go ahead and get our thickener in here. We want to be stirring this liquid when we gently and slowly pour in our thickener. 
And this is just going to give us a nice, thick, hearty base to work as our stew. It'll work great. Now we take a spoon. And this is where we find out if we need to adjust our seasoning. We have a beautiful thick liquid going on there. It's boiling up nice. Let's taste this. First thing I can say is it's delicious, but A, it needs some more salt. So we'll put about a teaspoon in there. A little black pepper isn't gonna hurt a thing. My pepper milk can kick it out quite rapidly. There we go. And I also want to add in a little more Worcestershire sauce a couple of tablespoons there we go now the carrots when i put these in i pour away from me and i get that bowl close to the liquid reduces splattering get my mushroom in there beautiful beautiful so now i can take my meat Gently work it back down in here. All right, at this point, lid goes back on. I want to give it just a little bit of time to finish cooking off and bringing my temperature down to medium. Now, folks, right now I'm just pulling some of those carrots up off of the bottom, but sometimes you're going to break a lot of meat loose, so do it very gently. All right. It's just the nature of oxtail stew. You want the meat to be as close to the bone as possible when you serve it. It doesn't have to be, but it's nice. All right, so we have our oxtail stew ready to put in a bowl and get served up. Now folks, how much did we use? Um, and it's something you need to know about this recipe. It's very flexible. You just part of learning to braise and learning how much of different things to use relative to the parent of the dish or in other words the primary product of the dish in this case oxtails I've got about six pounds of oxtails here all right and to that you can use up to a full bottle of wine in that and any extra liquid you need add in either some beef broth or water until they're almost completely covered that way you're cooking in liquid low temperatures it's called braising remember on that Worcestershire sauce, start with about a quarter of a cup, and if you want to, increase it up to a half a cup, just depending on your taste. But make sure that this has long cooking before you think about adding extra. We're gonna be using a bay leaf in this. Also, the black pepper, that was about two teaspoons there, about two teaspoons on that salt, six cloves of garlic, and six ounces on that tomato paste. As far as your carrots and mushrooms and anything else you want to add in the way of vegetables, just kind of balance the ratio, okay? Look at how much you have here and here and how much you want on the plate. I started with a pound of carrots and a half a pound of mushrooms for this whole dish. And that, of course, was a heavy amount on those items, but it still comes out beautiful and a wonderful dish to serve up. So folks, there's your ratios and quantities. This is good for about six people. You're targeting about one pound of oxtail per person. Now let's take a look at that gorgeous dish. Alrighty, it is time to get this served up. Very easy braising. There's not a lot to it, but the flavors it can yield. The beautiful meat. Mm. Wait, first of all, just enough texture to the meat to still know it's meat. The flavor, it's rich, it's robust. The meat is, it's good. It's delicious. I'm gonna enjoy eating this. 
I enjoyed making it. And I've had this before. It is a rich, inviting, hearty dish made with a cut that you just wouldn't suspect would be that good. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Oxtail Stew. Please enjoy it. And thank you for watching. If you would, do me one other favor. Take a look at the channel. There are a lot of different recipes there. And I'm pr pretty sure you're going to find other things that you're really going to like. Uh, sorry about the music in the older videos. Can't, can't fix that. It wasn't very good quality. But really good recipes. In all of those older videos, I'm remaking those recipes. So we'll have a, a new version on that. Thank you very much for watching this. Please take a look at satrotter.com. It's where you get the neat goodies and a lot of other stuff that's really worth looking at. Thank you very much and have a nice day, folks. Yeah.